on November 13th, 2024, the temperature in Washington, D.C. reached a balmy 52 degrees. Hardly the weather for a blazing fire in a well-insulated house. But that's what we saw in the White House when President Biden welcomed soon-to-be President Trump, promising a smooth transition of power. At the photo op, the two shook hands and smiled. Behind them, the fireplace blazed with a gas fire set to full blast. If it wasn't so serious, it would be laughable. Trump has promised to roll back climate regulations and drill baby drill, while Biden says he cares about climate change and sees it as an existential threat. Yet he saw no issue with the belching blaze. Shining orange against his smiling cheeks. As I write this, Biden is in Brazil. The first president to visit the lungs of the world. He was visiting the Amazon and promising new billions to address the climate. The official White House website brags, since day one of the Biden-Harris administration, the fight against climate change has been a defining cause of President Biden's leadership and presidency. The only thing missing was the picture of the gas blaze that says, not me, you. The presidential words sound hollow and out of touch when you see with your own eyes the picture or video of the transition meeting. I'm astounded that Biden, his handlers, or even Trump did not object to the gas inferno blazing in the fireplace. The message I got from these visuals was, da." Ooh, huh? It was like watching someone announce they are going vegan as a bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken is delivered to the door. In 2005, the city of Aspen announced the Canary Initiative, a broad effort designed to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. In the same year, the city fired up a gas fire hearth at the corner of Cooper Avenue and Galena Street designed to increase hang time of visitors downtown. Despite my vehement objections to the absurd hypocrisy, the person who was named director of the Canary Initiative said she had never heard any complaints about the fire hearth during her two-year tenure with the city. To his credit, in his original mayoral campaign in 2007, Mick Ireland argued that the hearth should be turned off. Mostly, though, no one noticed or cared about the optics of refined petroleum products burning in downtown Aspen like a middle finger pointed at the sky, mocking the very commitments being decided just down the street. An article in this paper noted City officials estimated that the hearth was responsible for releasing 9.7 tons of carbon dioxide into the air per year, which is about 40% of the annual emissions of the average Aspen home. The average Aspen home is anything but average.
An article in Sunday's Aspen Daily News explained that developers are having challenges meeting the city's goal to electrify everything as the infrastructure to do so isn't available in some neighborhoods. A local residential remodel project had to be redesigned with gas boilers to deal with the constraint the article noted, opulent, mostly vacant castles that gobble energy when no one is home are more important than saving the snow. Roughly 67% of our houses are second homes. In October, High Country News ran an index on Colorado second home ownership and noted percentage of second homes in five Colorado Mountain counties occupied from April to June 12. Percentage of second homeowners in Pitkin County who plan to become full time residents too. That's a footprint so big that you won't even notice the canary crushed under the carbon boot. In 2012, gas was $4.29 a gallon in Aspen. I wrote a column noting that I've even seen someone complain while filling the tank on their truck with their engine idling wasting it and buying it and complaining about it at the same time, American style. Even though gas is cheaper these days, the complaints and idling continue. Also noteworthy in 2012, a new library was being planned complete with decorative gas fireplaces to make things cozy. I once called the Aspen Skiing Company to find out why the gas fireplace at the Sun Deck was running on an 85 degree summer day. I was told that it runs all summer because the guests expect it. I wrote to the top brass at REI noting that their Seattle outlet had several gas fireplaces blazing, reflecting firelight on placards declaring their commitment to the environment. The company sent me a response. The store's consumption and GHG footprint are being addressed as part of each store's energy management plan again with the goal of being carbon neutral. The easiest way to get to our goal, as you suggest, is not using the energy at all. However, if the store team believes that the ambience of the store requires the use of the fireplace, then we need to find another way of getting at its impact. Translation, we know that the guests expect it. The optics, while meaning something completely different to me, were welcomed by the enlightened Custo morons looking for a new tent. The climate emergency is fueled by extracting, refining, transporting, and ultimately burning fossil fuels. We all do it, myself included. Every time we start the car, leave it running, turn up the thermostat, turn down the AC, flip the light switch, eat the driveway, fly in a jet, and all the rest. We are starting a fire. Starting a fire for optics on top of all that sends the wrong message, especially to young people who are inheriting a hot planet. 
ignorance and optics expected.